Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in. In this video, what you guys are going to see is uh, a lot of, just nothing but double board bomb pots. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be down at the Rockford Charity Group, which of course is where Dongfish and I, our next meetup game is. It's official January 5th and January 6th from 12.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. It's gonna be at the Mission Hills Country Club Golf Course in Chicago area. And uh, we're gonna do a one, two, five, bring it in. Uh, one, two, one, two, bring it in for five PLO. And then we're gonna have a, a separate table that's gonna be one, two, five, uh, four card poker, uh, and then one, two, five, five card poker. So it's gonna be round, round of each uh, on that one. So if you guys are interested in playing big O, I heard that they used to have a really big O uh in chicago that they used to get two and three tables going at a time so hopefully we can uh bring that crowd back uh, i happen to consider myself uh the best big o player in the world um and uh i i don't say that lightly uh there's a lot of other people who tell you that i play like a maniac and i do uh when i play big o but uh over over the course of the couple of years uh it's the game that generates me the most positive results on a consistent basis so if you're interested in challenging uh, the professor in a big O game, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys out there. A couple of housekeeping things. We do have the card protectors in. As you can see, ace, ace, 10, jack, double suited. Uh, on the other side, they say play smart and run like a guide. You can order these uh, as well as the hats or the hoodies online. Now, if you show up at a meetup game with one of the card protectors, drinks are on me for the rest of the night. Even though the card protectors are only 20 bucks, I want more and more people to get them. Uh, I want to have uh, an issue where I show up at a meetup game and I got to buy the whole whole uh, room a, a drink. That would be nice. So um, in any case, yeah, in this video, you're going to see nothing but double board bomb pots. I decided to separate out uh, day two at Rockford into nothing but double board bomb pots. The 5100 game was supposed to be going, but because the WSOP main event was in town, uh, the $1,700 buy-in No Limit Hold'em tournament, uh, they decided not to run the 5100 game uh, on that Saturday. And it's a 5100 mixed game, by the way. So if you're into mixed games, they're definitely bankroll building games. They're great games to play. I'm going to be covering some mixed games as well. So I will be playing at Rockford before the meetup game just for the 5100 game, just to get some video content of it. Uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, in this video, again, nothing but double board bomb pots. Uh, the biggest thing on double board bomb pots is pressure. It's the same thing as big O, pressure, 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 pressure. You want to apply most pressure on the turn. You don't have to apply a ton of pressure on the flop, even though the flop will give you the nuts and you're like, I better bet pot so people don't call. Uh, you'll see what the Rockford Charity Group was not used to seeing was me betting minimum on the flop, even if I had the stone cold nuts. So there's one hand where I bet minimum, which was 15, gets around to a player and he decides to check pot it and then I repot it and the table's like shocked. Like what's worth $15, all of a sudden's worth $600 or $700. Well, I did that a lot because on the flop, it's okay to get the feelers out. It's okay to build a pot. Uh, and, and even if you bet $20 into a $100 pot or $30 or $40 into a $120 pot, it's okay because it allows you to apply max pressure on the turn. So I did on day three, start upping my bets on double board bomb pots. Uh, up to instead of call, like betting men, which was 15, I started value betting like 40 and $50. Uh, so because people were calling no matter what. And then that way it allowed me to apply max pressure on the turn. Uh, and then of course, follow it up with max pressure on the river. You're gonna see one hand where I get my hand caught in the cookie jar. Uh, you're gonna have that happen from time to time, especially when you play as loose aggressive as I do. Uh, or as the Maniac does in double board bomb pots. And then you're gonna see a $7,000 pot where I am 100% free rolling the guy. Uh, so anytime you can be in a free roll or your opponent could be drawing dead in any significant pot, especially if it's over a thousand bucks, let alone seven grand, um, that's a good situation to be in. So uh, definitely stay tuned, watch all the way till the end. Uh, click on the link for the merchandise. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And uh, this is gonna be a vlog of just double board bomb pots. Keep in mind, this is on day two. I ended up spending three days at Rockford. So there's gonna be another uh, episode that'll probably cover just double board bomb pots again. But uh, I actually had over two hours of footage from this video that I had to uh, narrow down. And I think it's only gonna be like 30 minutes or so. But uh, enjoy everybody. And as always, play smart and run like a god.
It's nice to start us off with some rock music there. So on our first double board bomb pot that we looked down, we have 357 Jack. Now, the uh, two boards that are out there, which you guys are going to see in just a second, uh, connect my hand in, in, a, in a small fashion. So on the top board, we have deuce five six, uh, meaning that we have a straight draw if we hit a four. And on the bottom board, uh, we have three five seven, which means we can hit a gut shot as well, uh, meaning we need a four on both boards. So uh, we go three ways to the turn. The first guy bet out 60 bucks. Uh, which seems like kind of a little bit of a value bet, which it is. And the top turn uh, is a 10. Uh, in this situation, that 10 does nothing for our hand. But on the bottom board, look, we actually improved to an open-ended straight draw. So this is a, a, a situation when we can still scoop both pots. Now, here's the thing I want to tell you. If he, The guy who's betting probably had nut flush draw. When you look at this and you say, well, there's two spades on top, two spades on bottom, he's bound to hit one, right? Well, with his nut flush draw going to the river, knowing that two other spades are already out, his odds of hitting a spade are actually 15%. Uh, so he bets $200 thinking I got to hit one of them. So even if he drawing to both boards, it would be 15% and 15%, which is not very good. So in this situation, I can still probably win the top board, even if a five comes up or a jack comes up or a seven comes up. Uh, bottom board, obviously open it in straight draw now is what I'm trying to hit. So there is a good chance I can still scoop this pot. And if I can't scoop it and I hit on one board, my goal is to apply maximum pressure on the river if it gets checked to me. So if, for example, on the bottom board, if a four comes, but on the top board, say like the five of spades comes, uh, you know, the, the one, if, if he checks to me, I can pretend like I have the stone cold nuts on the top, but we're going three ways to the river for $200 and, uh, which, you know, here we're just trying to hit both boards or one board so we can apply pressure and, uh, the river, oh my God, comes a four and a nine. So we basically have second nut, second nut on both boards. So this is like great. So when the player does check. I'm like, I need to get maximum value here just in case somebody does have a set here or if somebody has a worse straight, like 3-4 four, or 4-5 four, and they didn't want to bet it at all. So I am definitely going to get max value and I'm going to bet pot. So when I throw out a pot size bet, dealer says it's 9.45 when it's actually 9.15, but whatever, I throw out the 9.45. First player folds and then the second player releases and we end up scooping this one. All right, on this next hand, the top board is king five three with two spades, and the bottom board is jack five eight with two diamonds. So here we have eight eight seven nine. So we flopped a set on the bottom, and we have a spade draw on the top. So I'm going to value bet this. This is a situation where I bet thirty, I get one caller, I get two callers. Uh, you're going to see how many callers we get on this because I think it's quite a bit. Now, it's a pretty draw-heavy board, too. Somebody could be calling with nut spades. Somebody could be calling with nut diamonds. There's all sorts of straight draws out there, 6, 7 on the board, 9, 10 on the board, 4, 6 on the board. So pretty much everybody should have some kind of draw to this, and they have, obviously, uh, some runner-runner uh, possibilities, too. So, yeah, basically the whole table calls minus one guy. And uh, so now we're building a nice juicy pot here, $255. And uh, we're sitting with a set. Okay, so on the top board now, oh my God, on the top board, we now have a, a full wrap with spades. And on the bottom board, we do have the second nuts. We did improve to a straight, uh, but somebody else could easily have a straight. So uh, I'm going to bet $255 though. I, I'm definitely going to apply max pressure or $200. The guy behind me snap calls. Now, this board is still wet, still very connected. A lot of people can have a lot of things here. Uh, but in this situation, I have a monster draw on the top, uh, and I have a really, really good hand on the bottom being second nuts, and even if I'm behind, I still have a set of eights. So, oh my God, somebody check pot. Now, check potting might seem like a great thing to do in double board bomb pots. Only do it if you are absolutely have the nuts on one hand and you're like super drawing to the nuts on the other uh that your nuts on one board cannot be counterfeited um because if you have like nine queen on the bottom board i can get a hit a pair and then i have a full house and you no longer have the best hand possible 
So just be wary when you do that. But when he decides to check pot, I got a guy behind me and he's got a decent stack. And I'm like, well, I don't want to play against two people. So if I'm either going to, I'm either going to re-raise and pot it or I'm going to fold. So I decided to re-raise. I'm like, I'm going to go all in just in case, put more pressure on the guy behind me. Uh, that's the appropriate move. If I call there and the guy behind me calls, I'm not li loving life, especially playing out of position. But uh, the top comes a queen and the bottom comes a, a 10. And uh, yeah, we end up shopping this one because we have eights full of 10s. He did have nine queens, so he had the nut straight on the bottom board. And then he beats us on the top board with just a pair of queens. So his nine queen gets half the pot. It's the only thing that sucks about double board bomb pots, but I love them. I think they bring great action. So on this double board bomb pot, we have... Ace of hearts, king of hearts, and six of clubs on one board. That's the bottom board. And then on the top board, we've got queen of clubs, four, seven of hearts. Here, oh, wow, we have a set on one board and not really too much going on the bottom board. I mean, we do have, like, a pair of sixes. We can go runner, runner, straight. We can turn a six for three of a kind. Uh, you just really never know what's going to happen on the bottom board. But we definitely have a set on the top board. So we're just, you know what? We're just going to kind of value bet it. Uh, and at, So $20, you're going to get a lot of callers. We get six callers going to the turn. Now, this is great because now we're just building a pot. I love building these pots, seeing all the momentum. So on the top board, turns a deuce, doesn't change anything. But on the bottom board, look at that. We turned the K7. Now we have a set of sevens on both boards. Oh, we are definitely betting pot when people check. Yeah, now we have, uh, yeah, and so we're sitting pretty. I mean, we still have a straight draw on the top board. Uh, but yeah, a set on both boards. We're, we're loving life right now. Uh, the only thing that's really going to beat us is if we get like three ways and one person's got a set of queens and another person's got a set of kings. Uh, that would really suck. But, you know, uh, sometimes you just got to take your chances. I mean, it's a really low percentage chance that anybody's going to have that and we didn't hear from them on the flop. Oh my, we go three ways to the river. Oh, the the turn the river's a, a nine and a king. Neither of those change anything. The only thing that changes is now king six is beating us. That's about it. But uh, yeah, we essentially have, we should have the nuts on both boards in this situation. So there's a uh, thousand twenty in the pot. Yep, double checking my cards. I do have a set of sevens on both boards. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, so we're going to value bet it. We're going to bet a stack of green and three blacks. So that ends up being $800 uh, into a $1,000 pot. So that's a good sizable bet. I want to get a call here. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Because here I think I'm scooping. I'm fairly certain I'm scooping. The first player folds. The other guy, he ends up calling, but he has less than that. He doesn't have quite $800. Uh, but I think he had like 300 or 400 and... I mean, so I show him. I say my, my entire hand is, is pocket sevens. Funny how you can play four card, double board, Omaha bomb pots, and only use two cards on both boards in some cases. I think that's just crazy. All right, now this hand we're coming in mid-board, and the reason why I realized it was going to be a big hand is because I've got quads on the bottom, and I've got a club draw and a gutter shot uh, straight draw on the top. So because there's an ace on both boards, I know even if the guy has pocket aces, I'm not drawing dead on the bottom because the other ace is on the top, and uh, I'm drawing way live. Uh, but he bets pot. I raise pot. He announces he's all in. I announce I'm all in. I say, I hope you have pocket aces. Give me a club. And it doesn't happen. We, we just have quads. And he didn't even have pocket aces. He had pocket kings, but... I love the sweat. He did have our clubs covered, but we did have a gutter ball. Uh, not very often you get to free roll for a $7,200 pot. Man, why couldn't that hit? That would have been nice and juicy, but we're taking half home. That's fine. And on this next double board bomb pot, we have four, five, seven on one board, queen, king, five on the other board. Now they're both complete rainbows, no paired boards. These are usually the most draw heavy boards. Uh, because people are going to have sets and, you know, straights are going to be calling them or people might be floating a lot. So when I look down at deuce, six, eight, ten, and I have the stone cold nuts on one board and I have nothing on the other, I'm going to bet the minimum. So I bet $15. Now I'm doing this because I've been, I was doing it quite a bit that night 
And I think it shocked the Rock for Charity group because they weren't used to seeing people do that. And sometimes I did it when I had the Stone Cold Nuts like this, and sometimes I did it uh, when I had a decent hand on one board and needed, like, super help on the other. But um, if you do it throughout the night consistently, eventually somebody is going to look you up, and they're going to look you up in a big way. So they're either going to, like, check pot it, or they're going to, um, you know... Yeah, usually check pot it, or, or if you bet, then they'll just raise you. Anyways, but yeah, so when I look down, I bet 15, it goes all the way around. Uh, this one guy decides to check pot it, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's music to my ears. So I'm like, this is great. Uh, the first player gets out of the way, and I'm like, I think I might have caught his hand in the cookie jar because uh, I'll just make it 600. Uh, I've only got like another $800 behind, um, and the guy's got me covered and, uh, but he saw me bet $15, like, I don't know, the previous five bomb pots. And then, uh, you know, sometimes fold on the turn, sometimes pot on the turn. But, uh, this is the first time, you know, somebody was like check potting me. And, uh, so my hand looks pretty strong. Like it's pretty obvious either I got a set of Kings or I have six, eight, which I'm fine with. And I love, no, I'm like, I've only got 800 bucks behind, you know? And, uh, <clears throat> he uh, goes in the tank, and uh, yeah, he, he uh, after I show him his, my chips, he goes in the tank, and, and he ends up calling. And uh, this this turns out to be pretty funny, because I'm thinking, oh, he's got 6'8". I could be getting quartered here. That really sucks. Um, if I'm getting quartered, you know, that sometimes that happens in these bomb pots. Like, if he's got 6'8", queen, king, 6'8", anything right now, I'm getting quartered here. But when the turn comes up, uh, or he ends up calling here, uh, and yeah, again, yeah, so she's just grabbing his chips. Um, and I'm kind of surprised he called because I thought he was like fooling around. But in any case, turn's a nine, and the other turn on the other board's a nine. Now I actually have a gut shot, so I've improved from no draw to a gut shot on the bottom board. And I still have the nuts on the top board, and I get it all in, and he calls, because I do have a redraw. And uh, I end up turning my hand over. I'm like, I've got 10 high on one board, and I've got uh, the nuts on the other. And um, I'm thinking he's probably got like 6, 8 something, so I'm getting quartered here. And no, what he called me with was literally uh, ace, 9, 5, 4. So he, he just literally called uh, with a pair, uh, and it managed to turn two pair on both boards, but... He dodged a huge bullet there. That was a big bullet for him to dodge.